early February 2016. Francis, you are at your home and you have a few guests there. One of them is Sarah and you have just poured some tea. Can you please describe your guests and the scene for us? What's going on? Yeah, Francis kind of looks over from the kitchen, the countertop kind of looks out to the living room. Um, He keeps his eyes focused around at the group. There's about six of them in total, each one of them from the youth group, he being the uh, the youth pastor at his church. He has a a thing of coffee and and tea being made for them, as well as an assortment of uh, little cookies and cakes. Just something he picked up from the local grocery store, you know, um, some of them almost taste like plastic. He has his eyes, though, on on Sarah, the young, attractive woman. Though he tries to shift it around to the others, there's, of course, Greg, a well-meaning young man. I think he has his hopes on playing football one day, Um, but really it's kind of just a dream. There's Samantha and Peter and, uh, oh, there's Curtis as well. Uh, each one of them uh, is kind of waiting for him to bring over his his treats and get down to Bible study. Francis is somewhat excited, but, you know, he doesn't have many visitors to his house other than these moments. So it's good social time for him. Do you have any special plans for the evening? Yeah, if Francis uh, looks over, he does hope that uh, after the Bible study, maybe he can convince Sarah to stay a little bit longer. After the others have gone, maybe he can put on a movie or talk to her a little bit more about things that have been going on in her life. Despite the age gap, Francis can't help but look at her with desire. As evening fall and the other guests leave, I want you to roll for your disadvantage as Sarah is staying at your home. So he takes a a breath and he's able to kind of wait for it uh, as he brings out uh, another batch of coffee and sits beside her. He ensures that when he does sit down that they're touching at least close enough to feel warmth as he kind of takes his Bible in hand and and places it upon the the table. Sarah, um, thanks uh, for for staying after. I uh, uh, just wanted to make sure everything was okay with you and that you enjoyed the study and um, (laughs) sorry, I just, I'm a little nervous. It's a, is there anything you're looking for? Her eyes uh, start to fill up with blood. Sarah, are are you okay? I, you're, what do you mean? You're, um, I don't know if you need to go to the to the facilities. Your your eyes, there. L- look, uh, and he, he kind of like will will take her by the shoulder and 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 find the closest mirror and and kind of show her to herself. As you uh, are looking in the mirror with Sarah, you notice that the eyes are normal again, and she's uh, looking uh, confused at you. Uh, um, What's wrong? You know, it's, I think it's, it's <clears throat> you know, the, the, the pastor and the, the deacons and I, we, we've been, we've had a couple early mornings um, going through certain books. Um, uh, sorry, I just, I must be tired. Um, she turns to you and uh, puts her arms over your shoulders and come closer, and she kisses you. Francis um, kind of takes a breath in and, and lets her scent fill him, his nostrils. I, Sarah, Sarah is, is this okay? She push you away and look at you, and you see her eyes are bleeding, blood tears. He, he closes his eyes and, and rubs them and then it opens them back again. Sarah? They are still bleeding. And I want you to roll keep it together. A nine. You're not really sure what happens after this. She lets you into the bedroom and things are getting 
heated and you can lower your stability by minus two. She's acting like a, a demon or something, possessed. You are taken away by her. It's early afternoon. You are not sure what day it is anymore. And you have this uh, recollection of Sarah in your mind as you wake up next to Oliver. He's on his hands and knees, shaking his head. Not fully aware, but you, Francis. You hear a deafening rumbling from behind. The both of you are on the ground outside the burned down farm, not far from Oliver's car. There are other bodies around you. They all look dead. You don't see Dan or Vicky anywhere around, and time is growing short. As you peer back down the road you came, you see a hole growing larger and larger, coming your way, swallowing up trees, buildings, cars, people, now a hundred meters from you, as wide as it is long. There's no end to it. The only way is forward, along the dirt road, and it has to be fast. You take a look at Oliver and his car. What do you do? I'm shaking. Oliver, Oliver! Wake up! What? What? Who? What? I, I look at Francis, distraught, confused. What happened? I... I... I didn't... Wait, where are the others? I have no idea, but, but things are falling apart, okay? I, I need you. I think we got to get out of here. The hole is coming closer. It's now 50 meters from you. I, I panic. I stumble up, leaning into Francis heavily. I look to the ruins of the house and is that how it looks like is the fire even still going or is it just now a burnt ruin it's just a burnt ruin the roof is gone and uh, you only see one half wall left da- david was there he was there uh, and i start stumbling towards the car as i'm saying this to francis who's david uh, as i kind of chase after him like oh my gosh man D- 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 no, I mean Daniel, Daniel, not David, Daniel. Daniel was here. Uh, just, just get in the car. Let's go. The hole is thirty meters from you now. Yeah, Francis is like running forward, uh, hoping to eclipse uh, Oliver. Not really <laughs> caring if he he gets in the car with him. Just I fiddle with my keys and just try and get the door open. You get the door open and you get in the car and. The only way to go is the dirt road that leads west into the forest. Just go. I start driving. The dirt road is narrow. Only one car can pass at a time. You hope that you won't meet another car. It would be the end of you. You are going high speed along the dirt road and the ground behind you is falling. It's just behind you now. Trees falls down to the sides of you. The growl of the earth is deafening. The last thing you saw as you left the farm was it being swallowed by the earth. I want a driver to roll act under pressure. Fifteen. You're in full control. And then I want you both to roll keep it together. Thirteen. Ooh, (laughs) twenty. Francis, you, you are really keeping it together now. Uh, but Oliver, you can choose one thing from the list there and describe how you feel. I become guilt-ridden. It's my fault. It must be. I did something wrong. I led the other, the others to, to, to my friend, and and now they're all dead. They're all dead, right? And now we're here in this car, and I'm driving Francis and. And I should have, we should have stayed, we should have looked, maybe they weren't dead, but we just left them. And I'm just driving. You can lower your stability by one. Don't worry about it, okay? We we got, I don't, we got to take care of ourselves, okay? Let's, let's take care of ourselves first. And then we can figure out everything else. I want you to describe your escape. It will be a close call, but you will get away with that uh, roll for act under pressure that you did. And the ground will stop falling eventually. But the scene is yours now. 
I feel I'm just driving, driving down this long dirt road. At one point, you hear the engine kind of splutter a little, and I just go, no, 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 I do something with the clutch that I know is dangerous, but it works. You hear the car grind a little against something, something maybe is loose somewhere. You see the speedometer going up and up, 80, 90, 100. And at one point I just turned to Francis and I'm just saying, we're not going to make it, we're not going to make it, we're not going to make it. Shut up, we're going to make it. We're not going to make it. We're going to make it. And Oliver, I want you to roll for your disadvantage in firm. 19. I mean, my liver hurts like hell, but I don't have time to worry about that. And I somehow ignore it. You continue. There's no other way to go unless you leave the car and head out into the forest. The ground has stopped falling behind you, but it can start any time again. You have no idea where this dirt road will lead you, maybe just out into the wild. Or you might even end up in Norway. You really have no idea. After about five minutes, the road is blocked by a black SUV with tinted windows. In front of it, there's two guards in black military clothes with hoods. Both have submachine gun at the ready, and one of them raises a hand to stop you. Francis, I want you to roll observe a situation. Perception. Two, these soldiers or guards or whatever they are, they are familiar to you, Francis. You have seen similar ones before. The six guards on the metal ramp above the steel tables in that cellar looked just like these. So what do you do? Uh, Oliver, um, what do you think? Uh, who, 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 are these like military or something? I start slowing the car down. Francis will, will get out and, and, and wave his hand. Hello? Um... <laughs> you're 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 blocking the the road. Um, is there any is there is there an issue um, here? One of the guards comes up to you. He says, "This road is closed. You have to go back. Can I see your IDs, please?" I stumble to get my wallet out and show them my IDs. I say, uh, "Everyone, Kumar's dead. Do you know what's going on?" W- what? Everyone in Karuna is dead. There's been like a massive, is it on the news or something? You've got the internet on your phones. What are you talking about? It's in, there's been a colossal earthquake and Karuna is gone. Like everyone's gone and it's it's still happening. I don't know what's happening. Is it happening anywhere else in Sweden? Do you know? It looks horrific. Like I, I, I don't see how you missed it. It's, there's so much dead. He looks at the ID and... Then he gives it back to you, and he looks confused, and uh, then he asks for your ID, Francis. Uh, okay, uh, Francis will dig through his pockets, um, kind of looks through. Uh, oh man, um, it, it must have, I, I must have, we, we were in such a hurry to, to get out of the, the city, the, the sinkhole was opening up, and I, I, I must have dropped it. I, I am so sorry. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have any ID. The guard steps back with his submachine gun ready, pointed at you, Francis. Francis is like raising his hand. Hold on. Um, wait, wait, wait. Why, why are you guys so aggressive? Like... The other guard uh, walks uh, up to you as well. I'm an American, okay? Whoa, wait, you... Uh, okay, we don't want to... If, if, if the border's closed, the border's closed. But what, we're not... Like, who are you guys? Are you like the military border patrol or something? You notice one thing, both of you, that uh, the guard who have uh, spoken, he speaks with an uh, American accent. Hey, yes, uh, uh, American, me, I'm... I. W- where are you from? <laughs> you don't have any ID. He's lost it. We just told you. It's, yeah, like, it's, it's a, a global disaster. People are dead. Yeah, but, a global disaster. Yes, right behind. Are you, like, are you crazy or something? What do you mean? No, if, if you just look back miles, like like the, the, the town before this, we, we drove 
it, we didn't know that we would survive. I mean, look at the, and, and Francis is kind of going in front of the car where like the blood smears of where Oliver like hit people before. Yeah, like look at us. There's obviously a disaster going on. I'm looking. Where are you headed? I don't know. Safety? I think it's best if you come with us. Let's go. Uh, okay. Um, are we under arrest or something? No, no. I just want to clear a few things out before I okay. leave you on your way. Sure, fine. That's fine. He nods with his head to the SUV. Ooh, uh, I guess Francis will follow. He walks behind you. The other guard uh, open the back door and wait for you to get in. Uh, Do you need me to get in my car? We'll uh, we'll take uh, care of your car. Okay. Uh, sh- sure. Um, Francis will get into the back and sit down. You see me probably looking a little conflicted, but I'm so distraught that in a way I almost go, okay, fine. And I get my phone out and I start trying to access... Wi-Fi, whatever I can to be like, see, look, we'll show you, we'll be on the news. As soon as you uh, bring your phone out, the first guard uh, knocks it out of your hand. Hey! Or tries to, at least. Do you want to roll avoid harm? Yes, I do. Let's do that. That's seven. He knocks it out of your hands. And it uh, flies away a few meters. What the? Next to the road. What the fuck, man? I Get in the car. And he points his uh, machine gun at you. Hey, hold on. We have we have rights, all right? I'm an American. You're not an American, now. Huh? Y- yeah, but it's still, we have rights. You can't just knock someone's phone out of their hands. One of the guard lifts his uh, machine gun towards you, Francis. Okay. <laughs> Francis is great. This is saying, I, it's just, it's, it's been a long, long night. And day and week. <sighs> okay, okay. He'll he'll sit down and just kind of look down at the ground. The guard uh, handcuffs you. Hey, uh, uh, this isn't really necessary. Just to be certain. Uh, uh, certain about what? That you don't do anything. You got. Just, I need to phone my family. God damn it! They need to be told what's going on. You need to get in the car. Uh, uh, f- Fuck it, Come on, fine. Oliver, Whatever. let's just... yeah. Okay. okay. You are in the back seat of the SUV. There are armored glass between the back and the front of the car. The two guards get in at the front, and they drive away with no more words. They turn the car around and are heading deeper into the woods, leaving your car on the road. Am I in the back with Francis, then, by ourselves? Yeah. I say to Francis, he's on police, are they? I think there's some sort of crazy people who want me to die. Whoa, hold on. Hold on. Uh, you know, maybe it's, uh, what what country are, are we in, in anyway? We should still be in Sweden. The, the, I don't think they're police. We, we get crazy people who sometimes have guns here as well, you know. I, 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 I don't even... Isn't that going to be funny that we lived through that and we're going to get killed by these guys? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I wouldn't go from from this to that. Uh, you're, you're, I think you're just exaggerating a little bit. Uh, maybe they've had some recent uh, security issues and they're just being overly cautious. But I, I think once we once we finish this little hayride and talk to the right people, I, I'm sure we'll be fine. You know, we just, you never really said, like, how did you even know Dan and Vicky and all that? Like, because, okay, I got a weird, all this was for them, but I didn't really know who you were. And then you keep going on about garden stuff and being terrified of doctors. What, what's all that about? I I have no idea how I came to, to know them. I know that we were in a hospital together and there was this, this doctor there, this, and the things that he would do to people was... I don't really want to talk about it, but ah, that's that's when it started. And let me ask you one thing, Francis. Do you mention the doctor by name? He'll kind of pause, and it was, it was Doctor Doctor Hall was his name. 
I I don't know where he's from, really. I, I assume Sweden, because I'm now in Sweden. But Oliver, if, if you could see what, what they did to people, it was... Oliver, as you sit there and uh, listen to Francis, you remember something. The other night at Daniel's apartment, you had to ask permission to go to the bathroom. And an orderly went with you. You shake your head. What? Why? You were drowsy as you left Daniel in the recreation area. He was talking with Dan, or trying to. Dan didn't respond. He was just staring into nothingness. When you got back, Daniel was gone. You saw two orderlies take him away. Francis was at the table next to Dan and Vicky's table, talking with Sarah. She looked uneasy as Francis touched her face and had a strange look to his face. You feel panicked, as if everything is a lie. But what is real? Is this a memory or a dream? Who are these people? I don't know, and I just go quiet as I'm remembering or thinking this, these thoughts. And I just slump in the back of the car for now and just start like, yeah, yeah, sure, man. Okay, yeah, yeah. Francis, you notice uh, shadows moving outside the car. It's like if they are moving through the air, flying, passing by, back and forth. It's very hard to focus on them or even see them, but they are there. No one else seemed to be aware of them. Suddenly one of them pass through the front window and going straight for you. As it enters your body, you bend like a bowstring and you can't move. All you do is trying to gasp. It's stretching you out from the inside. Suddenly a scream from somewhere and the car starts to wobble. Then it falls over and starts to spin in mid-air and comes to a stop with a heavy crash. I want you both to roll endure injury. That's a four. Oliver, you you have to choose what happens to you as the car crashes into a tree. Do you receive a critical wound or knocked out or do you die? <laughs> well, Peter, I'm going to choose. <laughs> um, <laughs> I shall choose um, to be knocked out, I feel, as was I handcuffed like to a seat as well as handcuffed in the hands? No, just handcuffed. Okay, so I feel it's almost like as the car goes over, I just, in a sort of bundled position, go into the side door and I hit my head and I just go out cold. You're unconscious. And uh, Francis, uh, you don't uh, receive any injury or anything and you are still awake. (coughs) Oliver. The two guards are dead and the car have crashed into a large tree 20 meters from the road. Oliver? You don't see the shadows anywhere. Uh, Francis will just kind of... uh, God, I'm sore. As he crawls over uh, uh, to to where Oliver is. Oliver? Hey. You see uh, blood running down his face from where he hit his head. Oh, God. All right, Lord. Help me again. And he'll kind of place his hands over his face. (gasps) Oh, that's not good. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, I'm going to stabilize him. You feel that... uh... He's actually not uh, very hurt. He's just uh, unconscious. But as you do this, you feel that your power grows out from you and you lose control. And you see one of the guards in the front seat start to twitch. Oh, God. Uh, (coughs) Uh, He'll he'll move over. Sir, are you okay? The glass between uh, the front and the back of the car is still there and... You hear no sound. He'll he'll kind of pound on the the glass. Uh, Hello? The guard is uh, slowly turning his head and he looks at you. One of his eyes hangs out from the face. My God. The other eye looks dead and he opens his mouth and blood pours out. Oh my God. Francis kind of falls back and starts crawling away, grabbing Oliver. 
Oh, God. Uh, <sighs> the guard is uh, trying to get through the window. No. Like an animal, but he can't. Oh, God, what would I do? Uh, it, it, it'll try to open up the back door. Yeah, it's open. Yeah, falling out, kind of dragging Oliver along with him. He'll, he'll look around. Hello? Oh, God, my head. Um... Oliver, wake up! As he kind of like slaps Oliver in the face. Come on, man. I can't. Oh, God. Um, he, he looks around. Is there a gun? The guards have uh, submachine guns in the, in the front. Uh, they also had a, a weapon belt with a pistol or something. Oh, God. All right. He, he will gather his courage and move over to the front uh, in hopes of grabbing one of these weapons. The guard who is uh, moving around there like an animal, he sits on the passenger side. He's looking your way. He'll move around to the driver's side and, and see if he can just open or, or maybe reach in to, to grab a gun from the, the, the driver. Or maybe there's a, a weapon uh, under the wheel or, or something, anything. The driver has uh, a pistol in his belt in a holster. Uh, the two submachine guns are at the passenger side and the uh, the guard who's moving around there as you open the door you hear him <laughs> and he starts to crawl towards you he'll try to grab the the pistol real quick and, and close the door roll act under pressure coolness 14 you do it but uh, it takes some time because uh, you don't get it loose right away and the guard comes over and grabs your hand. Fuck. And he comes closer with his face. <laughs> He's gonna bite you. Uh, he'll he'll try to shoot this thing in the face. Violence. Uh, does this uh, uh, apply with my divine champion? No. Oh, God. <laughs> my God's not with me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> A four. Uh, so you shoot almost in panic at least uh, three shots and none of them connect with this oh god man he's still holding your hand Oliver you wake up hearing gunfire you're on the grass outside the car uh, oh uh, I attempt to get up extremely dizzy my head throbbing and I see what's going on you do uh I blink and I try and just help Francis get away from this man. Like, I'm just like, oh, quick, into the woods. Francis, just get, get into the woods. I want um, Oliver to roll act under pressure. And I want Francis to roll uh, uh, with the coolness to, to help. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to roll, Francis. No. <laughs> Oliver uh, grabs you and uh, push you away from this creature. You have a, a pistol in your hand. A Beretta 92F. I think I blink a little when I actually see you're armed, but I still go, come on, just, 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 just get in, let's just get out of here. Come on. Into the woods. Let's, let's stay on the, the, the road at least. I look around. Are we actually near the road anymore? You're 20 meters from the road. Oh, okay, fine. Okay, get, get on the road then. Okay. All right. Oh, God. Did you see that? The creature doesn't seem to be able to get out from the car. He's stuck in there. I don't know. I think he's got... Like, we, we can't help him. We, 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 he was probably going to kill us or something. Let's just get on the road. Yeah, but what is it? He, his eyes are... are it, oh, my God. Someone shouldn't be alive after that. I know, right? Francis, you're pretty sure that you created him. Oh God, I, I, Oliver, I, I have to go back. What, what, no, what, no, 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 just let him be, like, there's so many people dying today anyway. What was, like, that guy was probably going to do bad things to us. I don't even know. Let's just get back on the road and get away. I have, it's, it's my fault. I. What do you mean it's your fault? No, it's not. What? It's, it's, it's something I have to overcome. God has, has put it in as, as an obstacle. I, I can't let his soul continue on as it is. But, like, oh, we really don't. I'm sorry, buddy. I don't have time for God and souls and all that right now, okay? Let's just get get, get on the road 
and then okay if we find some help maybe we find some help come back but right now i don't even know like how we haven't got a phone we haven't got the car anymore francis lifts his gun and points it at oliver uh, fuck, fuck look your car is maybe in uh, half an hour from here oliver i need you to understand something i created it i i have to put his soul to rest and i i need you to stay with me i don't want to be alone I just start crying. I'm like, okay, fine. Just don't shoot me, please. Okay, fine. I'm sorry, Oliver. I, I'm i not normally like this. I just, just, just come on. And I meekly start following you back. Although I'm trying my best not to actually look at you or even look to the car in general. Yeah. <sighs> Francis is going to look over to this person who's, who's still moving and, <sighs> and, and try to just shoot him from afar. Put him down. You aim uh, carefully, or <laughs> do you close your eyes? Or mm-hmm. Yeah, Francis is, is not accustomed to violence, so he kind of just squeezes the trigger uh, while squinting, kind of peering out uh, between the, the veils of his, his, his eyes. As he, he shoots off a couple of times, hoping it completes the job. You can roll act under pressure or violence. You decide. I don't want to touch violence. (laughs) There we go. Act under pressure. That works. You kill him. I want you to roll, both of you, actually. I want you to roll perception, observe a situation. Oh, no. (laughs) 13. Oliver, you notice that uh, the guards in the car have earpieces. And you may ask one question if you want to. Well... What is our best way through the situation right now? Getting out of it, to be honest with you. <laughs> you think the best way to get out of this situation is to maybe go back to your car? I look at Francis. I imagine there's some silence for a moment. I fight the urge to vomit. I mean, you just shot at the guy. and I kind of meekly go, okay, fine. There you go. You put him out of his misery. Okay, fine. Can we All right. go back to the car? We can go back. We can go back to the car. I. We we need to take their weapons just in case. <laughs> you think it's that bad? Is it? We're like what? Like a Mad Max movie now or something? <laughs> like I don't. I don't know. It's just ever since I I stepped into this godforsaken country, I I've been accosted by by everyone, and I'm I'm tired of feeling helpless. I start going to the car, and I say. You know, this isn't normal, by the way. People, I, I have, it's, I live here. It's a nice place, okay? It's that maybe when there's a national disaster happening, people get a bit fucking touchy. And that's why we need weapons, okay? Just, uh, and, and Francis will go over to the side and, and grab, like, the, the weapons belts and the, 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 the submachine guns. And There are plenty of weapons uh, in there. Two submachine guns with the... Uh, an extra mag to each, and uh, you already have the one 9mm automatic gun, a Beretta 92F. There's another one as well, and uh, each of the guards also have a, a knife. I look at one of these earpieces, I take it off. Probably the guard who didn't come back to life and get shot. So, the other one. Yeah, okay. Well, what is that you have, Oliver? I don't know. I must have been talking to people. No, that's what you use these for, to talk to people. Oh, sh- shut up! Oh my god! Oh, uh, just smash it! Uh, fine. Oh my god! I-, I throw it to the ground and smash it. You destroy it. Oh my god! The other god probably have one as well. Oh, fuck! Fuck! They they saw me. They heard me. But they won't have hurt the. F- that doesn't matter. Okay, give me one of these guns. Fuck! I don't know how to use a gun. Okay, whatever. Let's get to the car and let's go. Let's just leave these people. Let's get out of here. You've done it. You've done the thing. You've, you 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 can say God bless them or whatever you do. And let's go. Okay. Uh, uh, and he, he tentatively hands a, a, one of the guns over to, to Oliver. I do my best to put it in my jeans, but I, and I know enough. I, I remember in movies. I, I quickly check it for safety. There must be a safety on it, right? Somewhere on and off. There is. Okay. Turn it on and uh, put it in the jeans. Oh, God. Um, okay. Uh, you start to walk back. Francis will just whisper a quick prayer. Oh, God, I, I'm sorry. 
uh, for, 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 for all of this, uh, Okay, uh, Oliver, we, we gotta run. Yeah, okay. There, there might be more coming, and, and... We need to try and get back to the car. We, we don't think we were driving along, but, I mean, on foot, we're just gonna be fucking walking around in a wood. So, let's try and get back to the car. All right, yeah, that, that sounds like the, the best deal that we have. Okay. You get back to the road, and after maybe five to ten minutes, the ground start to move. Oh. It start to shake. And you hear that familiar rumble again. A tree just to the left from you, five meters away, is swallowed up by the ground. <sighs> it's as if uh, something pulled it down uh -huh. and a hole start to form, growing larger. How do you react? I just let out one sigh as I look down the road. Is all this coming from where the car would have been? Yeah. I just look to Francis and just say, run, run, in the opposite direction. All right. Oh, God. <sighs> Francis starts running. It's like it's chasing you. Further up ahead, you see higher ground to one side, to the left side, a mountain. And it's forcing you that way as you come out from the wood, away from the road. The road is gone now. Into the open area, you notice an opening, an old mine. There's no way you would be able to climb. The only way is in. Oh, God. But before you even get there, the ground is gone from under you and you fall. I just scream, scream and cry and fall into the dark, thinking how unfair and how close we were. Protect us. Please. It's all over in a heartbeat, and darkness takes the both of you away. Francis, you don't know if you're dreaming or if it's a memory. You wake up in the darkness and uh, you remember all the boxes with the body parts. In your mind you see Sarah playing with her wooden ABC blocks. She doesn't look right. And you hear her go, This one have my ear. This one my eye. This one my... Francis, what's wrong? She almost sound like a child. <sighs> and she's at a round wooden table in, in an institute. You are there too, next to her. Where, where are we? I don't want to, Francis. You're confused. And then you wake up next to Oliver. Oh, God. You think he said something, but you, you never heard what it was. You're in complete darkness. Uh, Oliver? Uh, uh, what? Oh, fuck. I, uh, I, hold, hold on. Chill out, man, okay? Okay. Oh, oh. God damn it. I don't know where we are, but we should be quiet until we, we know, okay. okay? Wait, are we dead? Is this heaven? Oh, hell? No, no, this is not Evan. Oh, okay. We're not dead. We're, we're alive. How the hell um, are we not dead? Okay, no. I, I try and calm and I look around. Like, what can we see? You don't see anything. You think you might be in an underground cave or something. Suddenly you hear a gasoline generator start. And you notice that you are in a dim lit cave room as the lights is turned on. It's large, over 20 paces from wall to wall. The room is circular, and the natural cavern ceiling is at least six meters above you. There are several small oval yellow lamps embedded in the walls around you. The lamps are powered by a gasoline generator that stands on the other side of the room. There's no one there. Did it start by itself? There's 12 steel tables in the middle of the room that makes a circle. Beside each table is a smaller table with all tools and a large syringe that looks medieval. On each table you see a dried up human carcass. There's an all dark iron door. When you wake up you are on the floor just inside the door. The generator lets out a bang. 
and the room is heavy with the fumes from it. So let me know what you do. Francis kind of looks around for his his weapons. You don't have any weapon. Oh, God. Damn it. I stumbled to try and get up and... What the... The hell? What the fuck is this? I'm, I'm tired of this. I, I, I wake up somewhere new like every goddamn couple of hours. Oh. I try and hold on to um, Francis for a moment, like looking at him like, uh, yeah, okay. Well, okay, you know what? Let's let's not ask questions then. Let's just Fuck. get out of here. Okay, let's just let's be way out of here, right? Okay. Let's look. What, what's the point? What's the goddamn point? I don't know. Aren't you the one who believes in God? Uh, Jesus was in the desert, tempted by the devil. This must be our desert. All right, we just have to. Have you done anything in your life? Are 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 you are you without sin? What what were you before this? I I I, I, I you know I'm a student. I'm, I'm studying information security, computer science. One time, I think I lied to my friend about you know not liking their shirt, or, or I don't know, maybe when I was ten, I, like you know, some of the other kids bullied someone because they were missing a tooth. I don't know. I didn't join in. Uh, do, do you be- do you believe in God? No. Oh my God! Damn it! That's why this is. <sighs> okay. 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 <sighs> okay. Take take my hand. All right. We're gonna do this okay, real quick. Okay. 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 All right. All right, Oliver. I need you to truthfully, truthfully accept God into your heart right now, okay? Uh, what? No, come on. That's... Fucking, fucking do it, man. I... Fine, okay, God. Yeah, God, save me, please. Thank you. I repent sins. There we go. Is that? Okay. 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 Ugh. All right. All right. We're, we should be on the right path now. Oh, God. Uh, and, and Francis will, will kind of look around and, and try to like see as much as she can. Lord, grant me the sight that I need to to get through this. As he tries to pierce the illusion, you can roll, see through the illusion, soul. I did for a ten. Oh, there you did. What did I win? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes, but you. You sense a presence in the room. You're looking over the tables and you see a few hammers and knives on the tables. You only seem to have your clothes on. The weapons are gone, but there's something there. And you both hear a voice, not sure if it's in your head or from all around you. Oliver, it sounds like your mother, but twisted and grotesque. Mom? Mom? No. What will you do to get out? Uh, (laughs) A sacrifice. Yes. Give me a sacrifice and I might let you out. A piece of yourself. Not too small, nor too large. A little something of yourself. Yes. A sacrifice. Show me that you dare. That you are worthy. Oh, or you can sacrifice your friend. And you may leave unharmed. Or fight my champion together. Once the cowards sacrifice is made. What the fuck? I just start panicking and I'm looking at Francis and I'm looking at the dark and like uh, did I hear that? yeah you both did Oh, this can't be happening this, this can't be happening this can't be happening I go fuck that I, I grab uh, one of the things off a table like a hammer or something and I just go to the door and I just start like trying to this, get something let's get this door open and get out of here did they, they say something about a champion? I don't know a f- fuck is this biblical weird like all right come on god damn it whatever whatever you have let, let's do this oliver and i are 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 together we, we can take whatever you have so let's do this there's no answer what do you do by the door trying to use the hammer uh, and maybe anything i can maybe like a chisel use like a chisel maybe there isn't a chisel itself but something that's chisel like i'm trying to get this door open 
Yeah, there's a few knives and screwdrivers. The door is locked from the outside. There's no keyhole or handle on this side. Well, in that case, I just go to stand by. Francis, like, holding things. I, I try hammering on it a few times, no avail. I scream in frustration, and I just go back to Francis and like, okay, okay, Oliver, okay. It, okay. it seems pretty solid, and uh, you hear an echo from the outside, like it's maybe a cave a corridor or something that leads away. Look, uh, Oliver... I need you to relax, okay? Relax, okay. I'm relaxing. I'm relaxing. Sure, great. Right. It's all hey, good. Hey, 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 hey. All right. God is in you now, all right? You have more than enough strength to to, to, to get us out of this T- together. You and I, like uh, uh, James and, and, and Peter, we're, 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 we're the divine champions. You, you and me. Okay. I'm a divine champion. Okay. I'm a divine champion. I've got it. Okay. Great. That's that's great. Real good. I, I, great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> God, give us the strength, <sighs> and let's let's move on. Let's uh, let's get out of here. Let's fight whatever temptations the devil might be throwing at us. And, and, and don't listen to your mother. Uh, it, it sounds like she's a bitch. Hey. <laughs> Go fuck it. Fine. I, Fine, it's, it's probably all just a fucking hallucination and we're dying of blood loss in a car crash. I don't know. Okay, fine. Fine. Uh, and Francis will start kind of moving around this, this cavern area and, and see if there's a passage out of here. Do you want to investigate? Yeah, I don't want to roll it, but... <laughs> <laughs> you don't find any other way out from here. It's just the iron door. And you're um, with that roll... You can ask two questions. Uh, can I ask, um, how do I get out of this situation? You think you need to do a sacrifice or something. How much of a sacrifice? Or you can sacrifice your friend and you may leave unharmed. It echoes in your mind. Francis looks at Oliver. Oliver, do you, do you trust me? I, um, eesh. sure. Okay, yeah. I say, kind of just stepping one step back from you. All right, Oliver, I am so sorry. Uh, you seem like a, a a good kid, you know? I, I think maybe at, at one point in time, we, we probably would have been friends, you know? Listen, don't don't you come near me, Francis. Don't, don't you come near me now. Just do, you stay back. Keep, keep distance. You have the hammer, right? Yes. <sighs> okay. And Francis kind of extends his hand and his pinky and kind of lowers it to the to the floor keeping his eyes closed all right go ahead wait 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 what uh, just just smash it man just hurry up before I, I change my mind just hurry up okay I, wait no I don't know if I all of her fucking do it now but, but, but you, you, you're gonna need your hand aren't you just my finger don't take my whole hand it said fuck uh uh Okay, okay, wait, wait, put it on the table then. Put it on the table. All right. Okay, uh, okay. Francis, we'll, we'll get up and put it on the table. You hurry up and do this or I'm going to beat you, okay? Uh, uh, fuck! And I raise the hammer. I try and break it down on one of his fingers, not his thumb. <laughs> yeah, you can roll. Act on the pressure. Please get it right. Ooh. Nope. That's a six. You hit very hard. The back of the hand. Francis, I want you to roll endure injury with a minus two. Nine. So you have to choose. I don't think you can die though. You already have a critical injury, but uh, you will get an injury as uh, he breaks the bone in it. But it's not a critical injury. You can decide yourself if you are knocked out from the pain or if you're awake suffering oh uh, francis is gonna take the easy way out <laughs> just pass out I'm like <laughs> yeah you pass out oliver you you see that you you completely crushes his hand breaks several bones in it you completely miss the fingers and he falls down to the floor oh oh god i'm sorry sorry i'm sorry i didn't mean it i didn't mean to do it like I go to try and 
break, stop him at least falling completely to the ground. His hand is bleeding. <sighs> and then I look around and I go, well, well, you fucking fuckers, is that enough? Right? No? You hear this voice again. That's one of you. <laughs> ah. Your turn. Oh, fuck. Oh. And I, I look at my own hand and I, 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 I take a moment to sort of position Francis so that he's at least lying down on his back, looking at his hand. And I, I, I go to the table. Okay, and this time I, I try and aim better and also take one of my fingers out with the hammer. Now I don't want you to roll act under pressure. I want you to roll willpower. Five. You can't do it. <laughs> Shit. Uh, I just, I, I go and I stop and then I go and stop. Like, I, uh, I, I go back to Francis trying to like slap around the face. Like, wake up. Wake up, Francis. Come on, wake up. You wake up, Francis. It hurts like hell. Oh, God. Uh, oh, man. Oh, geez. Oh, what, what, what happened? And as he, I looked down at my finger like... Which hand was it? Oh. Left or right? Left. It's completely useless. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I, I messed up, but it, uh, you, you got, uh, it's working, I think. You've you got to do it to me as well. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm sorry. But there you go. So just, yeah, I'm sorry. And I hand you the hammer into your other hand. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> Francis will just lash out with the hammer against uh, Oliver's, um, <laughs> probably his jaw. Do you want to roll for violence? Yeah, I'll end up killing myself, but. <laughs> 11. And uh, Oliver, you notice uh, what he's, he's trying to do. Do you want to roll a void harm? Yeah, I think I'll try and avoid it just to like make because like if it happens how he ha- he's gonna do it, I feel fuck that. But reflexes, it's okay. Seven. But I'm too slow, so it comes across more as I desperately attempt to shove at him. But that's about it. Francis, uh, you hit him. Oliver, endure injury, fortitude, twenty. Oh, nice. Oh, that's good. He, he just, uh, he doesn't hit you very clean. Uh, you almost get away, but it will be a bruise or something. It hurts, but it's uh, it's nothing more. And you, you take a few steps back. What do you do? Uh, oh, I, was just, uh, I, I grab any other implement I can find. There are a few other hammers and screwdrivers and knives around, lying here and there. I just grab another hammer and this time I try to use the pain in my now jaw that I imagine still got a good clonking even though it wasn't as bad as it could have been and this time I try and use the pain to do it again to myself like fucking come on yeah roll willpower again 13 you do it and you can roll endure injury without any penalty (laughs) 8 oh you you do it good you can describe what happens I, this time, go straight for probably, like, my left long finger and I smash it in with the hammer with such force from the pain that I pretty much crush my little... I crush the finger almost completely, just as a mangled, bloody mess. It kind of comes off the force. At first, you don't feel anything, but as you lift your hand, the, the finger is hanging in its skin. Ah! <laughs> it's angling. I want you to roll keep it together. Nine. You fall unconscious from the shock. And you can lower your stability by minus two. Wonderful. Francis, what do you do? Francis kind of shakes his head. Okay, all right. We're doing this again. <laughs> As he moves forward and places his hand upon him. Oh, Lord, let this happen right this time. Uh, as he tries to lay on hands. Oliver, you have a injury, a normal injury in your in your hand there. But it's stabilized, so you don't have any minus for it at the moment. Francis, as you're doing this thing of yours, you feel that the energy flows from you and from uh, your friend Oliver 
up into the air. It's feeding something, something that is in the room. Oh God, uh, Francis! <laughs> Thank you. Oh, we're gonna have so much fun. I think I'm gonna need another sacrifice from you. Oh, what the fuck are you trying to heal him for? When I want a sacrifice. Whatever you take, you take from me, all right? And give it. <sighs> Fuck. Francis, we'll, we'll try to find a knife. And, ah, God. In his other hand, he... By the way, Oliver, you wake up now. Francis will try to stab down into his, the palm of his hand. Which hand? The mangled one. The other one. The right one. Mm-hmm. You can't even hold the knife with your left hand. Uh, he'll he'll kind of hold the knife in his teeth and, and, and try to like oh god yeah only where you see this what do you do wait what the ah uh, oh my hat I, I I looking at my mangled hand that somehow isn't as bad as I thought it would be it's still awful but like I swear it was almost hanging off and now it just looks more like a normal bruised hand but I'm looking away no wait we did the fucking sacrifice we sacrificed for you you fucking piece of Fuck! It's just, it's my fault. I, 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 we, we, help me, help me cut, help me, help me stab this hand. <laughs> Oliver, fucking uh, do it, or I'm gonna stab you in the face. I you swear know to God, what, Francis, man. Sometimes we're a real fucking jerk. And I grab his hand oh. and I do my best to not, I don't want this to be violent. Well, any more violent than it has to be. I just sort of push against the knife rather than, like, you know, smack it in. Act on the pressure. 13. You do it, but it isn't as fast as you. Oh my god! As you would like it to be, and Francis, you are in pain. Uh-huh. I want you, Francis, to roll. Keep it together. Uh-huh. He's doing it way too slow. Francis is crying into his shoulder, like, "Oh my god!" You can lower your stability by minus two, and tell me how you react to oh. this torture. Oh man. I am now at irrational. Yeah, he's like, oh god, oh please. As he's like <sighs> hyperventilating and, and uh, just kind of grabbing at the rocks around him and, and praying to, to God, like, please, God, this has to wake me up. I don't want to do this anymore. Please, God. Oh my god. Oh god. <sighs> just, just a weeping mess on the the ground. The door opens. And a familiar man enter the room, if it is a man. Tall, gray skin, black veins, with an iron spear in hand, watching you with black eyes. His claws scrape the wall as he starts to follow it, and the door closes. What do you do? What? But no, we, we gave you what you wanted! What are you doing? Oliver. Come here, man. I, I lead into you. Just get out of here, okay? Help, help me up, and and you're gonna get out of here, okay? But I don't know. I can't leave you. I, oh, ah! Oliver, if you don't leave me, I will beat the shit out of you. <coughs> God. I, I. The creature jumps over one of the tables, faces you with spear in hand, ready. All right, Oliver, go. Francis will will just kind of run towards this whatever this thing is with his eyes closed, just hoping to tackle him. Like, oh my god! I try and go to the door. Then the door closed. Ah! And as I see the door close, and I sort of fall into it, I just kind of see Francis running towards the thing, and then I just go towards the table it was on, and I just go, F- "Fuck you!" As I try and barrage my whole body into the table it's on so that that table might get upturned a little. Francis, you can roll violence. Oh, God. You have a plus for your champion ability. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> <Let's>... <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me. <laughs> a zero. <laughs> that's, that's really great. <laughs> you come close to it and you're throwing yourself against it. It feels really good at first, but he turns away like he's dancing and the spear is pushed out towards you. 
and you have to roll avoid harm. Yeah. He misses you. Just by sheer luck, you feel. <laughs> Just trips over his own blood. <laughs> Oliver, you come over to the table, pushing it. You can roll. Act on the pressure. 13. You do it, but he, he doesn't f- fall over or anything. He just uh, jumps down to the floor. I look to the ground, seeing all the, I imagine, how spilt tools, whatever was on the table. You mentioned earlier that there were some syringes in this room. Yeah, large ones. Medieval ones. I, I, I grab one in my, you know, non-injured hand and I just run at him. You notice uh, that uh, they are filled with a blue liquid. There are 12 of them, one for each table. I just run at him, trying to stab him with this syringe, thinking to myself that this is how I die. I'm probably already dead, but I'm tired of not doing anything. Violence. Seven. You miss him completely, and he doesn't even look at you. He just steps to the side like he uh, felt you. And Francis, what do you do? Francis is like, come on, Lord, if you're with me, I, I gotta I gotta do this. And he's just kind of trembling, sweat all over his face, blood everywhere as as he kind of gets up from just dodging her falling from the, the recent attack and oh god. All right, Lord, help me. As he just kind of moves forward uh to try to tackle this this creature. Violence. <laughs> you completely miss him and he counters with an attack of the back of the spear like a like a staff towards your face roll avoid harm <laughs> 12 he hits you and you can roll endure injury but you don't get any penalty 13 he knocks you back and you fly almost 2 meters through the air lands on your back and you lose your breath as you're lying there gasping for air but none of it uh, enters your lungs and he walks towards you Oliver, what do you do? You're behind this creature Again, largely I feel because despite my miss he's going for Francis maybe I have a few seconds I start finally trying to actually make sense of all this hell because I'm thinking there must be something there must be something Can I try and observe the situation to give myself maybe a bit of a better chance here? You can do that. (laughs) Nine. (laughs) We're doing great. Well, I get to ask a question anyway. Just no bonus. Well, the question is, what is being hidden from me? I kind of feel like, what am I not seeing beside the obvious? This creature, uh, he looks just like a man, but you don't feel that he really is a man. And uh, on the side of his neck, you see uh, an opening. It looks like uh, someone have uh, installed something in his neck. And these uh, syringes seem to fit there. I, 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 I try and calm myself as much as possible. And instead of rushing at him again, I just try and slowly, slowly go. But the aim being that I don't want to dodge. I just want to try and get a syringe into his back of his head. He's not paying attention to me, right? He's underestimating me. Come on. You can uh, roll act under pressure and I will give you a plus two. In that case, that's 16. You do it. Do you press the syringe into his neck or head or into the hole on the side of his neck? Into the hole. And then you press the liquid into him, I'm guessing. Yes. Very well. As you're doing that, he completely stops and uh, he's frozen. And Francis, you see this. And the blue liquid is uh, filling his black veins. They're starting to glow with a light blue color. And the creature is, uh, his face is a mask of terror, fear. And he falls down to his knees. Ah, ah, Francis, grab another one, grab another one. And, and as soon as the uh, syringe empties, I just start stabbing the needle in again and again and again. Like, just fucking get it in his head. All right. Um, 
Uh, is, is there a he'll look around for another syringe or, or another weapon? There are one on each table. Oh, God, he grabs uh, one of them and, and tries to stab it into this guy's neck. Yeah, you do it, and you you recognize this liquid. You have uh, been uh, one of the subjects that have been affected by it. The fear, the nightmares. Oh, God. From the asylum in Bergen Institute in New Jersey, Jersey City. It's the same liquid. And the creature falls down on his stomach, unconscious. He shakes a little bit, then he's completely still. His black veins are blue now. Then they burst, and he dies. <laughs> and I just start stabbing and stabbing and stabbing into the back of this thing's head. I just keep doing it, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. I, 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 uh, I think he's, he's dead. <laughs> just, d- <laughs> It's all right. Oh God, I don't. I don't feel good. <sighs> no! I, I, I stagger up and I look at Francis and then I look to the door. Is it still locked, closed? The door opens up and you see a tunnel lead away from the room. Francis, the door. Let's. We can go. Let's go. Oh, I need. I need help, Oliver. I can't. Oh God. I go and give you my, I drop the syringe, and I go use my hand to try and help you move along the tunnel. (sighs) It's an old mine tunnel, and it's dark. As you follow it, it becomes darker and darker. Soon it's pitch black, and the air feels funny. You start to feel nauseated. Your legs feel like if they won't hold you up for long. Oh, Oliver, I, I'm sorry for hitting you in the jaw. I'm sorry for breaking your hand. And, and we, we did it, though, right? We we killed the devil. That was the devil, right? Or hell. And we we did it. Now we don't die in hell. Is that is that how it works? Oliver, you're the... No, no, this is just the beginning. It's, it's, it's every different place with more tortures. You fall to the ground. Still aware, but not drowsy and weak. Can't go on anymore. I don't think. I think this is it. this is it. Well, uh, I don't know. I have any regrets? Yeah, everything. I wanted to live a life, you know. Now I don't. Oh. Yeah, but like, one one thing. You can't. You have to be specific. Oh, I don't know. Uh, oh. You should have asked someone out on a date sooner, maybe. <laughs> It's always, it's always a woman. It's the same for me, too. Yeah. Your mouths are dry. You feel a burning pain in your eyes. Ugh. Oh. I just don't get why. Why? Ugh. I just... I don't think it's for us to know. And I close my eyes, stinging pain, but I imagine starting to maybe lose consciousness if I'm getting this drowsy. You hear footsteps. You can sense a light, but you see nothing. A voice says, take them to the bunker. We will continue there. You are taken away, somewhat aware, but at the edge of unconsciousness. A car engine, door slamming, a gate opening, many voices and footsteps. Then everything is black. You wake up in a cell with four white walls, just a bed and nothing more. Two orderlies have entered the room and you are too weak to do anything. They lead you away through several hospital corridors down a stair to a cellar room. They strip you and you are strapped to a steel table. Several tubes are pushed into your body a blue liquid starts to flow through them into you and you feel fear like you never had before. You are not the only one in here. There are many other bodies on other steel tables and the fear and the dark takes you out and you are lost in your worst nightmare.
Oliver. You wake up by the morning bell. You know it's almost 7 a.m. An orderly enters your room and helps you into the shower. You are almost apathetic. You just let them lead you. At 9 a.m., after breakfast and some rest, you are led into the recreation room. There are a lot of people there, patients and several orderlies. You fear them. And alone at one table you see Francis. And everything comes back to you. But you are at an institute, no longer at home. You remember traveling to New York to study there computer science as an exchange student. But that was six years ago. Your head hurts. Through the windows you see a park. You recognize some of the buildings. Jersey City. Francis, you are at the table in the recreation area of Bergen Asylum. You don't remember how you got here, but you remember them accusing you, telling you that you have abused someone. You don't remember who or why. Your body feels heavy, like it's paralyzed. You look at the windows and the outside. It's wrong. At first you saw the park. Now you just see a wall outside, an iron wall, a bolted dark iron wall just outside the windows. You were in the back of a truck. They drove through a tunnel underground, a bunker, someone called it. The station. This is not your city. This is not home. You heard them talk about the experiment and you heard your name. You look up. And your eyes meet Oliver's as he is led into the room. None of you see Dan or Vicky, but you are aware for now. Oliver is led to your table, Francis, and placed there. Oliver? Uh, uh, Hey, Hey, Francis. Uh, How's God doing? Are you okay? (laughs) Uh, I think we're okay. Oh, man. How how are you doing? Uh, Well, you know how it is. Uh, We're here, and uh, yeah, maybe we'll be better one day. Isn't that the point? (laughs) I don't don't know what... Do you know where we are? Is it called something beginning with B? I don't know. Asylum? What? Something like that. I don't remember how we got here, but you know how it is. I don't remember who, well, anyone is really, other than you. Although, huh, Dan and Vicky. Where are they today? Aren't they supposed to be somewhere? Hey, maybe. I just, I'm tired of being in hospitals and medical wards. (sighs) How's my hand? Do I, does it look good? It has healed, uh, but the injury is still there. You can use it. And it's stabilized. You still feel pain, but there's no open wounds and no broken bones anymore. Oh, man. Well, hey, at least things got a little bit better, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Did I do that to you? I guess I did. Yeah. I don't remember. I, I think. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I think we were in hell in a, in, in, in a cave. And I... We, we beat each other up. That's how I remember it, which is, you know, yeah, of course. <sighs> Francis will try to get up. Eric Jensen, a man in his late 30s. Your psychologist, Francis, and yours as well, Oliver. He sit down at your table, looking you over. Where are you now? He asks. Um, I think a hospital of some sort. Oh, God, my body's so sore. (sighs) The both of you remember having sessions with him, but that's all. Hey, doctor, how are you today? You good? He good. He's good. Uh, doctor, what what are we doing today? I... ah, My mind's so fuzzy. He's studying you, both of you. After a while, he says, So, you are awake. That will make the next part a bit easier to monitor. You are going into the tanks. The 
Thank you for listening. I want to give another big shout out to our friend of the theater from Red Moon Roleplaying, Craig Austin. Thank you, Craig, for joining us again as Oliver. Man, so good. Thank you for listening to The Experiment, a Cult Divinity Lost actual play podcast from TTRP Theater, featuring Peter Samuelson, Minta Krikomi, Mitchell Wallace, and myself, Curtis Wilkins. The game Cult Divinity Lost is produced by Helmgast. Music used in this episode is thanks to Coag and Incompetech. Find all of our productions at ttrptheater.com. If you enjoyed this podcast or any of our other productions, consider supporting TTRP Theater by visiting our Patreon page today. Exclusive benefits start for as little as $1. Thanks again from Peter, Minta, Mitchell, myself, and all of us here at TTRP Theater.